Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will dive into probably one of the biggest architectural mistakes people commonly make on Android or architectural misconception actually. Because what I will show you here is often considered a best practice, but if overused it's actually exactly the opposite. And especially if you're someone who frequently uses clean architecture on the Android projects, then watch this carefully here. So just assume you would be a new developer in a team for company that works on quite a big project. Because in the end, all architectural guidelines are designed to make it easier to work on big projects, to make it easier to change things, to make it easier to, to test things, and just easier to get a picture of the whole thing. And let's now assume your job is to dive into this project and change something related to logging in. Then you might be on the login screen here. For example, you have a little login button. And when you click that, you dive into your view model. And what I now see super often in other people's projects is that if you now want to understand what logging in really means and does in this specific context here, that if you click, control click into this function to see what it does, you get to the view model. Okay, it seems to launch a curtain scope. It seems to launch a login use case. So let's see what that does. We control click into that use case. Okay, that's actually a suspend use case. It's an abstraction. But what really does the login use case do here? We can click on this little arrow here to find that out that will list all use cases that implement the suspend use case interface. Here in this sample project, I only have login use case and register use case, which makes it easy to spot the login use case. But in a big project, this list would probably go far till the bottom. So let's just click into login use case to see what login in really does. Okay, the login use case uses an auth repository. And all it does is it delegates the login call to the auth repository. So let's see what the auth repository does with logging in here. Control click into that. Okay, another abstraction. We have an auth repository interface. But what really does the auth repository implementation do with that? We can again click on this little arrow to get into the auth repository implementation. And here we really find out what logging in really means in this regard. So we have an auth API, which we also might need to click into. In this case, it's just a simple retrofit interface. But this could be another kind of abstraction that abstracts out HTTP calling logic. And we also have something like a login mapper. Well, with mapping, it's probably obvious to you what this does. But if we want to see what this login mapper actually does, we can command um, click into this mapper. And we have another abstraction. So we have an interface uh, that uh, maps a domain model to a data model and vice versa. And if we now want to see what the login mapper does, we again need to click here to see the um, actual implementation of this mapper. And again, in a real project, clicking here would reveal tons and tons of mappers. And maybe you already got a feeling for what I want to show you here and what the big mistake is that, at least in my opinion, people often make. And that is overusing abstractions. So in the coding world, an abstraction is usually something that is either an interface or an abstract class, as the name says, and it's meant to abstract out some logic and to only provide an interface in the end of the logic that someone who uses this class, in this case, this mapper class, would really need. So someone who uses such a mapper does not really need to know how the mapping logic works. They only need to know, okay, I have a two domain function, a two data function, and these are the objects that this function takes. And the same way you can kind of consider your phone an abstraction of all the electronic wirings that are inside your phone. Because we as the users of our phone don't need to understand how things are wired inside. We only need to understand how we can control the actual phone's UI, which abstracts out how all these electronic signals are actually sent behind the scenes. So that's the purpose of abstractions, which in and of itself can make a lot of sense. But in the coding world, abstractions come with a cost. And that cost is growing complexity. So you can see it here in this little top bar, how many classes and files we had to open just to understand what happens when we click on a simple login button. And if we would have now taken this call in the auth repository here and just copy pasted that in our main activity directly in this on click function, that would of course be much more understandable. And yes, I know before you comment, this would be terrible architecture wise. Because as I said, abstractions, different layers, different classes, all have their place in a proper architecture. But what I'm trying to say is that you have to find the sweet spot between applying no architecture at all and over-architecting the whole code base with tons of abstractions you actually wouldn't even need. So how do you know whether you need an abstraction or not? Well, an abstraction makes sense if you have or plan to have at least two implementations of an abstraction. And when is that the case? 
usually in two scenarios. On the one hand, if you have multiple versions of something, let's say you have an auth repository implementation that makes use of a Ktor client as a networking library, and you might have an auth repository um, that uses retrofit behind the scenes. And if you now need to switch between these libraries and technologies, then the abstraction allows you to only need to change the implementation where you use that HTTP client. But since the rest of your code depends on the abstraction, which doesn't know what you're using for networking, this single class is all you need to change. Or the other common use case of abstractions is if you want to create so-called test doubles for your test cases. So test double is nothing else than just an implementation of a real class you use in your production app that is just optimized for testing. So for example, for testing, you usually don't want to make real network calls to the server because then your test cases in the app could fail uh, if there is a server error, if there is no internet connection. And all these are things that don't really indicate an error in your app, but on your backend. So what we commonly do instead is we create a so-called test double, for example, a fake, which just simulates the logic of our real implementation, which is then totally sufficient for our test cases. And in this case, we could create our auth repository fake class, for example, which also implements this auth repository interface. And if we then were to test a class that depends on such an auth repository, we could just pass that fake instance for the test case, which simulates the behavior of the real class. So these are really the two most common use cases of abstractions and when they make absolute sense. But very often there is not much value in abstractions, for example, when it's about use cases. So just because you can abstract the logic of a use case, like here with a suspend use case interface, that doesn't mean you have to do that. Because other than a repository abstraction, a use case abstraction doesn't really need to abstract out logic. Because the logic it would abstract out has to be completely isolated domain logic by definition. So the use case, it can't really happen that you need to abstract this out because it's some kind of boundary of your application, like a local database or in a remote API. No, a use case only contains code that really has something to do with your app itself. And yes, there can be value in abstracting out a use case if you want to actually um, have, a, have a test double for that as well and maybe test your view model in isolation with that. So assume you want to test this on log and click function in the view model and just test that it does the proper calls in the right order without actually putting focus on the login use case itself, then you could provide a test double for this login use case here that always returns true for logging in. So always assumes kind of a, su a successful login just for this particular test case. Because then that would really make sense since you have or plan to have at least two implementations of your use case interface. On the one hand, your real production use case that does the real login. And on the other hand, your test double use case that just assumes the login was successful. Now, in my experience for classes that just use simple logic without using any libraries, like a use case or a mapper, for example, I never felt like abstracting these out had a lot of value for testability. I personally always found the biggest value in just testing these classes, in, in this case, the view model, with the real implementations of the use cases, since all they contain is business logic. And business logic is by definition something you would want to unit test. And for that, people would have to start testing their projects in the first place, which is something I don't often see happening. So if you have a project and you never wrote a single test case and you also don't plan to write a test case, which I can absolutely not recommend, but if that is the, the kind of architecture you stick to, then there's almost never the purpose of having an abstraction. And removing all those abstractions you don't need in the project just makes the architecture much more understandable since you don't need to click into all these different layers until you find out how, is, how something simple like logging in actually works. And if you actually apply testing very strictly and also feel like you need to abstract out something like a use case to isolate logic in the view model, then please do so. Then that's great. Then you need those abstractions actually. But my real point here is to take a look at your project, take a look at your coding style and what you really do with those abstractions you use in your project. And if you don't have two implementations or don't plan to have two implementations of an abstraction, then get rid of it. You don't need that. Don't blindly abstract out classes just because you feel like it's clean. It's not. And if you don't yet understand things like testing but would want to get into that in future, then for now, I would actually prefer applying in non-ideal architectural practices, which you actually understand, than applying ideal, at least uh, what you've heard is ideal, architectural practices that you don't understand. Like if you don't understand why you have an abstraction at all. Because if you don't know why you're abstracting something, you also won't get a lot of value out of that abstraction. And no matter if you already understand the value of abstractions, or you would still want to get into it to learn about its advantages, then check out my testing course down below. Because in that course, I really dive very, very deep 
into how we can make use of abstractions for testing and a lot more. So click the link down below to find out more about the course. Other than that, thanks so much for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.